Greetings. This is Doc Ock coming to you live and direct from Black Facts Headquarters Central. So good to be here with everybody tonight, tonight. Okay, and tonight what we have for you is a proverb, a poem, and a story. The proverb for today is, he who begins a conversation does not foresee the end. He who begins a conversation does not foresee the end. Think about it. Don't think about it. Just think about it. Poem for today, coming out of the book, Lift Every Voice and Sing, right here. Okay, it's a book by James Weldon Johnson, who wrote the Black National Anthem as a poem, and it was which was later turned into a song by his brother, Rosamond, Rosamond Johnson. I don't know his middle name. I'm sure he had one as well. So uh, in this book, he's got some poems, and this particular one is kind of like a poem and a story, both at the same time. And it might even rhyme. Who knows? Let's see. It's called... Br'er Rabbit used the cutest of them all. Once there was a meeting in the wilderness, all the critters of creation, they was there. Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Possum, Br'er Wolf, Br'er Fox, King Lion, Mr. Terrapin, Mr. Bear. The question for discussion was, who is the biggest man? They pointed out, Old Judge Owl to decide. He polished up his spectacles and put them on his nose. And to the question, slowly he replied, Bro Wolf and Mighty Cunning, Cunning, Bro Fox and Mighty Sly, Bro Terrapin and Possum, kind of small, Bro Lions, Mighty Vicious, Bro Bear. He's sort of suspicious. Br'er Rabbit used the cutest of them all. This caused a great confusion amongst the animals. Every critter claimed it. He had won the prize. They spewed and they argued. They growled and they roared. Then pretty soon they just begun, begin to rise. Br'er Rabbit, he just stood aside and watched them while they fight. Br lion, he most tore Br bear in two when they was all so tired that they couldn't catch their breath. Br rabbit, he just grabbed the prize and flew. Br wolf and mighty cunning, Br fox and mighty sly, Br terrapin and possum kinder small, Br lion's mighty vicious, Br bear, he's sort of suspicious. Br rabbit. Use the cutest of them all. And don't you forget it. All right. So much for that. Moving on. Now, you know, we've been reading all kinds of story poems. Poems that, that tell stories. Like about those very same characters. Bruh, rabbit, bruh, fox, bruh, uh, terrapin, and all of them. But tonight, we're going to tell you we started this week, actually, telling stories of real live people. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to tell you a story of a real live person, one of hundreds of African-American or black inventors, however you want to describe them. That's up to you. And this particular one, he was an inventor that had a great impact in the field of electricity, electricity. Now, the thing you might not know or might never have thought about in terms of electricity is that it's always been around and it comes right out of the ground because whenever lightning strikes, the electricity actually comes from the earth and goes to the sky. I know it seems like it goes the other way, but that would be a lie. So just remember, electricity has always been around, but we always had a hard time trying to extract it from the ground. So electricity 
when people were able to capture electricity and put it to work, put it to some kind of use, it was the beginning of a new era, a whole new way of life. Because up until that then, everyone had to live by the sweat of their brow. If you wanted some water, you had to pump it. If you wanted to get your car started, well, no, not your car, because that has electricity in it. If you wanted to, um, to get water out of the well, then you had to you had to turn the crank. But it was all about the sweat of your brow. So your physical strength was important. But now in the age of electricity, you could have you can create machines to do more of the work. And so that's one of the, that's what Lewis Howard Latimer was involved in. He was involved in, what's the word for it? He was involved in putting lightning in a bottle. Lewis Howard Latimer put lightning in a bottle, or he helped to put more lightning in a bottle. So, Craftsman, engineer, inventor, Lewis Howard Latimer, pioneer of the electric lighting industry. Oops, almost forgot. Supposed to do something else here. Let me just make a little change here. Almost forgot. Almost forgot. I want to bring this down because I am going to be doing some editing of some of these materials at some point in the future when I have more, a little bit more free time, which I haven't had lately. Been too busy working in that garden. Okay, here we go. Lifting that bell, toting that barge. All right, here we go. Lewis Howard Latimer, pioneer of the electric lighting industry. Now, this is a direct quote from Lewis Latimer. I was one of the pioneers of the electric lighting industry from its creation until it had become worldwide. The telephone system as we know it is the product of many, many minds to whom honor should be given. That's a quote from Alexander Graham Bell. The story really begins with his father's escape from slavery in Virginia and arrival in Boston in 1831, where he later, later met and married another runaway slave from Virginia. But in 1842, slave owner James Gray arrives in Boston. Your honor, this here is proof that George Latimer is my property. Or Latimer. He must be brought to justice. But meanwhile, Mr. Douglas, Mr. Garrison, you must help us. Talking to Frederick Douglas and, um, oh, I don't remember Garrison. Uh, I think William Garrison. We'll try, Rebecca. Frederick Douglas, also a runaway slave, and William Lloyd Garrison were two of the most famous spokesmen against slavery. Speeches were made throughout Boston. What kind of law gives one man rights over another or makes one man the property of another, said Frederick Douglass. Let us all end in justice before injustice ends us all, said William Lloyd Garrison. And the city was outraged. The law of the day would have returned George Latimer to slavery. So money was collected and his freedom was purchased. Free. Free at last, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we was free at last, says his wife. Soon after a law was passed preventing state officers from hunting runaway slaves. Free at last, the Latimers returned to their lives of poverty. So they were free to live in poverty. Think about that. What kind of freedom is that? Any odd jobs, ma'am? When you uh, when on September fourth, eighteen forty eight, they had a son. Let's call him Lewis. Yes, dear. You know he had to go along with that, right? Can't argue with the mama, huh? Okay, here we go. Get that out of there. Lewis was bright and very talented. Early in his youth, he showed his ability to draw and later became a very talented artist. After school, Lewis sold the Liberator, William Lloyd Garrison's anti-slavery newspaper. Get your Liberator right here. Get your Liberator right here. I got him for you. Hot out the press. Hot out the press. 
William uh, Henry Box Brown just discovered in a box. Somebody shipped him from uh, Georgia all the way up to Pennsylvania somewhere. Oh, and on this case, John Brown's been captured. Mm. Abraham Lincoln elected president. Fort Sumter attacked. The South leaves the Union. Lincoln signs the Emancipation Proclamation. Civil War. Latimer's two brothers joined the Union Army. Lewis was too young, but wanted to help free his people. Slavery won't end unless the war is won. So he raised his age and he joined the Navy. Yeah. Joined the Navy, did he? Okay. The Civil War ended and Lewis was honorably discharged. Just what I'm looking for. Somebody wanted an office boy for the Crosby and Gould patent attorneys. That's right. Crosby and Gould. How about that? Okay, office boy. The pay is $3 a week. I'm going to be a draftsman. I'll take it, sir. When he wasn't running errands or sweeping, etc., he copied simple drawings. Doing fine. But I could use a little help, sir. After work, he practiced and studied and practiced some more. Soon, most of Latimer's time was spent at the drafting board. Thought we hired an office boy, but a draftsman. But you're a draftsman now. Thank you, Mr. Crosby. Shortly after, he became an expert draftsman and an inventor. Congratulations, Lewis. On February 10th, 1873, Latimer received a patent for a better water closet for railroad cars. Now, for those of you who do not have any understanding of what a water closet is, it's a place where there's water and it's like a closet. Now, what would you be doing in there? Yeah, that's what we now call a flush toilet. Okay, on a train, apparently. Latimer fell in love and courted Mary Wilson and wrote a poem for her, Ebon Venus. Let others boast of maidens fair, of eyes of blue and golden hair. My heart ache needles ever true turns to the maid of ebon hue. I love her form of matchless grace, the dark brown beauty of her face, her lips that of love's delights, her eyes that gleam as stars at night. Oh, marble Venus, let them rage, who set the fashions of the age, each to his taste, but as for me, my Venus shall be ebony. Latimer was a poet too. He later, later wrote a book of poetry. Oops. Uh, mm, uh, uh, oops. Uh, we've got a few more minutes left. In December 1873, Mary Wilson and Louis Latimer were married and they lived a very comfortable and happy life, enjoying promotions and a very high salary for a hundred years? Oh, and high salary for 100 years ago. You're the new chief draftsman. Pay is $80 a week, too. Near the office of patent attorneys Crosby and Gould was a school for deaf mute people where Alexander Graham Bell taught deaf people to talk. So we're going to drop off right there and we're going to return to this not on, no, we'll return on to this tomorrow. Yeah, we'll be able to finish this one off tomorrow evening. So we will see you then tomorrow evening. As Alfred Hitchcock likes to say, good evening. Meanwhile, all you adults out there, please don't forget, we still have some more of these books about Juneteenth that are left. Get them while you can and I'll autograph them personally. And send it right out to you in the mail. Don't delay. Get yours today. You find it on from uh, you can get it from Pyramid Books, P Y R A M I D Books, on eBay. So check out the eBay. We've got a link to in the center of Pan African Culture. Look for the link. I'll post it at the top so you can find it without a stop and get it without a drop. Meanwhile, all I need you to do is just drop a you know drop some cash. Okay, use the cash app or however you want to pay. No, don't use the cash app on eBay. 
you're going to use PayPal. OK, so you can use your credit card, et cetera. Meanwhile, all you liquor ones out there in um, La La Land, I need you to put your hands together, both of them under your head so you can lay it down on your little pillow on your little bed and go right to sleep. Please sleep tight. Sleep right. Don't let them bed bugs bite. But if they do hit them with a shoe so you can give them a clue as to what they need to do. That's right. You can beat them till they turn all black and blue. Thank you. And as for you adults, last thing I'd like you to do is go ahead, hit that subscribe button. If you're looking at us on YouTube, if you're seeing us on Facebook, go ahead, give us a like and give us a share. Let everybody know that you really do care, that we uh, really do appreciate it. Thanks for your time and your patience. We will see you tomorrow, tomorrow and tomorrow. Don't forget, we got a special coming up tomorrow. The special for tomorrow is Why Black Lives Matter. That'll be coming up at noon. It'll be a, a YouTube watch party, but you can get the link right through um, Facebook. So you can find us either way on our Black Facts channel on YouTube, or you can locate it, um, the playlist. You can locate it uh, through Facebook, either way. But we're going to be, we'll be available. You can ask questions, et cetera, and we'll be able to answer you immediately from noon to one o'clock tomorrow, be there or be square. We're going to have a lot of information about what's going on with the police and what's been going on with the police for ages. We're going to do a little historical rendition and we're going to have other people that will be communicating to you about that. We're also going to talk about that flag, some of these symbols that you all been tearing down. Okay. Like that, those Confederate flags, etc. So check us out tomorrow. 12 o'clock noon. We'll see you then with a great big grin. Peace out now.